Hello and welcome to our first November edition of Let's Talk Criterion and we take a look at the original Toho Studios 1954 Godzilla coming to the US and UK collections in 4K UHD. Barnes & Noble Criterion 50% Off Sale in the US has recently started and the title we're taking a look at today has always been popular in that sale and that's the original Japanese language Godzilla from 1954 which launched this legendary monster beloved by many and the originator of a modern day Hollywood major film franchise. Godzilla from 1954, Tokusatsu Kaiju film, directed and co-written with Takeo Murata by Ishiro Honda, from the story by Shigeru Kayama, with special effects by Eiji Tsuburaya. Produced by Toho, it's the first instalment in the Godzilla series, as well as its Showa era. The film stars Akira Takarada, Momoko Kochi, Akiko Hirata, Takashi Shimura and Foyuki Murakami. The film was released to Japanese theatres by Toho Studios on November the 3rd, 1954. Jewel Enterprises produced a heavily edited English language version of the film and that was directed by Terry Morse and it was popularly known as Godzilla King of the Monsters. This film starred Raymond Burr as a new character named Steve Martin. Now Transworld released this version of the film in the US on April the 27th, 1956, titled Godzilla. Responsible for launching the long-running Godzilla series as well as the genres of both Kaiju, Aiga and Tokusatsu in general, Godzilla was an incredibly successful and influential film both in Japan and of course internationally. The film tells the story of Godzilla, a huge prehistoric beast roused from his ancient slumber by H-bomb testing in the South Pacific, who proceeds to lay waste to Tokyo. Now only the young scientist, that's Daisuke Serizawa, holds the key to possibly defeating the invincible monster, uh, with a deadly chemical weapon called the Oxygen Destroyer. However, even as the destruction mounts, Serizawa resists revealing his invention to the world out of fear it will become a far worse threat to humanity than even nuclear weapons. Godzilla was followed by a sequel, Godzilla Raids Again, in 1955. Now on the evening of Friday, August the 13th, 1954, the Japanese freighter Aiko Maru is suddenly consumed by a white hot flash of light from the water near Odo Island, and it sinks. And now with the involvement of the Coast Guard, Southern Sea Shipping sends a rescue boat, that's the Bingo Maru, to investigate the accident, but it meets the same fate. A fishing boat from Odo Island discovers survivors in the area, but it too is shipwrecked before it can return to the island. Meanwhile, on Odo Island itself, the citizens of the local fishing community are unable to catch anything. Masai Yamada, a local fisherman and the only survivor from the most recent shipwreck, washes ashore on a raft and tells the islanders that something sank his boat. An elder says that must be Godzilla, though many of the younger islanders are hesitant to believe the superstition. According to local folklore, Godzilla is a kaiju who lives in the sea that comes from the ocean to feed on mankind. And whenever fishing was poor, the islanders once sent young women adrift on rafts as a sacrifice to prevent Godzilla from coming ashore. Now a helicopter carrying investigative reporters arrives on Odo Island and the residents increasingly begin to believe that the recent disasters in the ocean were actually caused by a living creature, but the reporters remain somewhat sceptical. Uh, 
That night, the islanders perform an exorcism ceremony in the hope of warding off Godzilla. A violent storm hits the island, and much of the village is destroyed as a result, as though it was crushed from above. Masashi's younger brother, Shinkiki, ventures outside during the storm and watches in horror as his family home is crushed by a gigantic creature with his brother and mother still inside. Now, the composition of Godzilla is pretty straightforward. It offers a balanced mix of static and dynamic shots. Honda's composition, while it's somewhat rough around the edges, still remains very serviceable and does what it needs to do. That's to visualise the post-atomic bomb tragedy and present Godzilla in all of its destructive glory to the spectator. Now, the miniature sets and special effects, while of course now somewhat dated, still succeed after all these years to engage the spectator and to draw him or her into the narrative. This is not only due to the exquisite quality of the miniature sets, but also due to the fluid concatenation and combination of these shots with shots with actors and actresses. Now, it's in fact creating an elegant and exquisite sense of spatial continuity that Honda and Subaraya enhance the overall believability of the special effects, whether they're on miniature sets or not, and they succeed to echo the horror of the atom bomb with a refined precision. Now, the cast for Godzilla consists of Akira Takanada as Hideto Ogata, Momoko Kochi as Emiko Yamani, Ahiko Hirata as Dr. Daisuke Serizawa, Takshi Shimura as Dr. Yuki Yamani, Fuyuki Murakami as Dr. Tadabe, Sakio Sakai as Hagiwara, Red Yamamoto as Mashai Yamada, Toyaki Suzuki as Shinkiki Yamada, Toranozuki Owagawa as the president of the Nankai Shipping Company. With Godzilla, Honda crafted a timeless classic monster movie. While its anti-nuclear and anti-war message is far from subtle here, the effective visualisation of the atomic horror and the destructivity of the invisible still hits the contemporary spectator emotionally. Godzilla plays out like a tragedy, but it's a tragedy that beyond its social critical nature has granted the Japanese spectator a way out of the claws of the wartime trauma. Now, a little bit more about our restoration. Criterion created their own 2K restoration of Godzilla back in 2011, using what appeared to have been a different scan of the fine grain positive, which they erroneously described at the time as a master positive that was struck off the original camera negative. Now, Toho later discovered that it was actually struck in 1983, and it was struck from one of the dupe negatives instead, so it was actually a generation further removed. Now, the dupe negatives were created back in 1973 and 1975, so they're the oldest remaining film elements, and they're only two generations down from the original camera negative. Now, the best parts from each were used on a shot-by-shot -shot basis to create the 4K version, with the dupe negatives being prioritised whenever it was possible to do so. No HDR grade has been applied to any of the Toho 4K restorations for the Godzilla franchise. And the results of all this scanning and restoration work are genuinely impressive. Given the generational losses involved here, there isn't really true 4K worth with fine detail visible, but yet everything is as crisp and detailed as possibly it can be. The grain is moderate, and it can vary a bit from shot to shot, depending on the elements that are being used, but it's still smooth and manages well with a robust encode. Damage has been significantly reduced as well compared to the older Criterion version. There's still plenty left over though, but it's far less distracting than it used to be. And Toho definitely applied automated tools as well in order to remove some of the damage, but it's barely noticeable here given the fact that the original elements only offer so much detail to begin with.
Yet despite the lack of a HDR grade on this release, some of the biggest improvements with the new master are in terms of the contrast range. The image is much less washed out here, with deeper blacks and far less of a black crush. There may not be 4K levels of detail in the textures, but there's certainly now more detail visible in the darkest portions of the frame. So is it a perfect restoration? No, but it's by far the best that this film has ever looked on home video, and it will likely be the best that it ever will look. Now, audio is offered in this release in Japanese 2.0 mono LCPM with optional Japanese barrier-free subtitles, and that's the Japanese equivalent of SDH. The overall sound quality does tend a little to be muffled, but there's also some distortion on the peaks. But that's just the nature of the original elements for this film. Other releases of Godzilla have been no different. It's quite clean, however, with background noise, pops and crackles kept to a bare minimum. And while the fidelity is understandably quite limited in this release, Akira Fukubi's classic score still serves to do the heavy lifting for the film, both in terms of the music and the sound effects as well. Now the package comes with a 4K UHD and Blu-ray combo and contains the film and the following special features. As already mentioned, a new 4K digital restoration with uncompressed mono soundtrack. We've got one 4K UHD disc of the film itself and one Blu-ray with the film and these special features. High definition digital restoration of Godzilla, King of the Monsters. That's Terry Morris's 1956 reworking of the original with uncompressed mono soundtrack. There's an audio commentary for both movies, and that comes from film historian David Kalat. Interviews with actors Akira Takarada and Haru Nakajima, and special effects technicians Yoshio Iri and Aizo Kamai. Interview with the legendary Godzilla score composer, that's Akira Fukubi. Featurette detailing Godzilla's photographic effects, introduced by special effects director Kochi Kawakita and special effects photographer Motoyoshi Tomioka. Interview with Japanese film critic Tadao Sato. The Unluckiest Dragon, that's an illustrated audio essay featuring historian Greg Flugfelder describing the tragic fate of the fishing vessel Daigo Fukuru Maru. That's a real life event that inspired Godzilla. We've trailers, and of course, as always, there's an essay, uh, this time written by the critic Jay Hoberman. And cover art for Godzilla is the original cover art that hasn't changed from the original release design, and that was designed by Bill Senkovics. The film has a running time of 96 minutes, and it comes in a 137 by 1 aspect ratio. It's already in the Criterion Collection as Spine 594, but it now gets its upgrade to 4K UHD. It releases in the US on Tuesday the 5th of November, and here in the UK on Monday the 11th of November. And of course, just recently Toho revisited this fabled creature of the deep with the highly successful Godzilla Minus One, a film which captured the original spirit of Godzilla, only in colour, with more modern visual effects and a full Japanese Dolby Atmos track. And already, of course, we're now seeing 4K Collector's Edition releases of this, and soon to come there's going to be a full US and UK release of this film with English subtitles not previously, of course, available. But the original still remains a testament to the simplicity and the ingenuity of the Toho studio back in the 50s to bring this iconic creature to the screen. And Godzilla the Showa era films, that's from 1954 through to 1975, 15 films in all, including this film, is also available in the Criterion Collection as Spine 1000. And it's certainly been a lot of purchases of that in the recent flash sales. In the next edition of Let's Talk Criterion, we'll be taking a look at the 1932 gangster film Scarface, directed by Hard Fox and starring Paul Mooney. 
So until then, from me, it's goodbye, and above all, good criterion viewing. Bye.